I think Otsi actually told us more about archaeologists than anything else, especially about their observational skills and powers of deduction. You probably know the story. Otzi's body was found sticking out of a melting glacier, high in the Alps, and was taken to Innsbruck where the university archaeological team spent six years studying it. They scanned the body five times. First they used conventional X-rays, then digital X-rays and three examinations with computer tomography. They reported that Otzi had broken ribs, his testicles had been removed and he had died later from battle wounds. They said he died about 5,300 years ago, based on carbon dating of the wooden handle of his copper axe, more on this later. When they found that Otzi had died 100 yards over the border, in Italy, his remains were transferred to the care of Dr. Eduard Egarder Vigel, chief of pathology at the Balzano City Hospital, who had no background in archaeology. In a specially constructed vault, kept a couple of degrees below freezing, Dr. Vigel began his own examination. The first things he found were Otzi's testicles, intact and in the usual location. The second thing he found was that not a single one of Otzi's ribs was broken. The sixth and seventh ribs on the right side overlapped each other due to compression under the ice, but no fractures. The next thing he found, which was perfectly visible on the Innsbruck scans, was an arrowhead embedded in Otzi's shoulder that the archaeologists has simply failed to see and a matching puncture clearly visible in the skin on the back of the shoulder. Then there was the axe. The axe head was made of copper, finely polished, of a type called a pal stave, which came before the invention of the socketed axe head. Otzi's is well made, with only a small flaw in the casting, but doesn't have the raised flange that added strength and elegance to later designs. The only thing is that this type of axe only existed for a short while, from about 1500 BC, after which copper axes were replaced by bronze, though some copper pal staves found in Scandinavia do date as far back as 2000 BC. It is no doubt for this reason that the original Innsbruck team thought at first that Otzi was around 4000 years old. Why are they are now saying he is 5300 years old? Was Otzi a time traveler importing futuristic technology? A century or so either way is one thing, but a thousand-year anachronism is simply not credible. As a result, this one carbon-14 measurement has forced a revision of centuries of accumulated knowledge about the date of the advent of copper smelting in Europe. The 5,300-year figure is based entirely on carbon dating though, which is usually quite a reliable method of dating organic material long buried in the ground. What nobody seems to have considered is that Otzi was never buried in the ground. Otzi was buried under ice. What the Innsbruck scientists clearly didn't know is that the half-life of a radioactive material, like carbon-14, can be changed by bombarding it with high-energy radiation. This should not come as a surprise since radioactive decay is a nuclear reaction, and inducing other nuclear reactions at the same time as the decay can interfere with it.